Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are on right now because of the State of the Union address. It is the third State of the Union address President Biden has delivered before Congress, and the stakes this time could not be higher. With the general election now officially underway and his job approval numbers low, the president had to deliver a strong message. The fight for freedom, an overarching theme tonight, as the president tries to reignite his reelection bid. Mr. Biden using the speech to tout his accomplishments, highlighting his work on economic issues for the middle class. He also called out the GOP for failure to pass a border bill and vowed to fight for reproductive rights. If you, if you, the American people, send me a Congress that supports the right to choose, I promise you, I'll restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land again. Alabama Senator Katie Britt delivered the GOP's response to the State of the Union, and she slammed the president, saying that he's out of touch and doesn't understand the issues that American families are facing. We have the worst inflation in 40 years and the highest credit card debt in our nation's history. Let that sink in. Hardworking families are struggling to make ends meet today. And with soaring mortgage rates and sky-high child care costs, they're also struggling to how to plan for tomorrow. We want to bring in Dr. Melinda Jackson, the professor at the Department of Political Science at San Jose State. Thank you for joining us tonight. I want to start with the overall feeling of tonight. A lot at stake for the president, not only just State of the Union address, but really the opening salvo. Now it is and truly the march toward, uh, you know, the election, especially now that we know that Donald Trump will be the presumptive uh, nominee for the Republican Party. People said they really wanted to see him come out of the box strong. Did he? I say yes. Uh, I watched the whole speech from beginning to end. Um, that was really the challenge tonight. There have been so many questions raised about his age. He is 81 years old. He is already the oldest president. Um, and, you know, that has really been uh, something that voters have been raising questions about. We see that in the polls. So tonight he really needed to, to meet those concerns head on, to appear energetic, thinking on his feet. Um, and I think he did that. Uh, he, he definitely um, was, uh, you know, forceful in his delivery. Um, he used the first person a lot. I will fight for you. I will do this. Um, and he engaged in quite a bit of back and forth with the Republicans, which he really seems to enjoy. So he was he was ad living in places, you know, and having some some banter. Um, and, you know, I think that it was effective uh, for um, you know, for folks who who are willing to watch it at this point, because let's face it, this is the rematch that nobody really wanted. Uh, we now know it is Biden versus Trump again, and we're going to have it for the next eight months. Um, this was a really important moment for Biden to, again, reintroduce himself to the American people and really try to address those concerns about is he up for the challenge of another four years at his age? Um, and I think he did as good a job as as he could have tonight. The president did actually, you know, take on the issue of age head on, saying that, you know, you probably haven't noticed how old I am uh, and said, but he said that that's an asset for him uh, because he's been around so long that he understands that he said uh, at my age, uh, America, I'm different than my predecessor, never really mentioning Donald Trump by, by name, but really referring to him as his predecessor and listing a long list of things he said that were wrong with his predecessor, including that he sees an America of resentment, revenge and retribution. How effective was that for him to call out Donald Trump that way and really differentiate from him how they see America? Yeah, I think it was effective. It was throughout the speech. He was drawing those contrasts. So, you know, it definitely had a campaign flavor to it. Um, but again, this is the start of the general election campaign, and he's going to take advantage of that audience um, with the State of the Union speech. Um, he did present a very positive message. And you're right, at the end, uh, it was, you know, with good humor, you know, he kind of poked some fun at himself, said, you know. He, which one of them are going to win over uh, uh, those other undecided voters at this point, those Nikki Haley voters. Do you see do you see either of the president or uh, Katie Bell tonight winning those undecided voters? They both clearly were 
targeting their message toward those swing voters who are going to make the difference in November. Uh, the choice of, of um, this young female millennial uh, senator uh, from the South, you know, who really was try it was presenting a very, you know, Trumpian message, a very strong, um, aggressive Republican message and rebuttal, um, but talking a lot about uh, moms and dads, parents, children, really trying to appeal to women um, who are going to be a key uh, part of the electorate that Trump needs to work very hard to try to win, particularly those suburban women, those more moderate or conservative women who uh, don't like Trump and may consider either not voting or uh, even voting for Biden. Biden also stressing reproductive freedom, reproductive rights. That has been a very strong issue for the Democrats um, and also of great importance to women. So those Nikki Haley voters, I think, are interesting. Some of them are going to go for Biden. Some of them are going to go back to Trump. And some of them are going to sit it out. So that's mm. where the real competition is between now and November. Yeah, I think a lot uh, with Bell really appealing to the base for sure. Um, and so the question is now, how can they get those other voters to come online? Dr. Jackson, we appreciate your insight. Thank you for being with us this evening. You're welcome.